Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and once again, half an abstract because my internet is down. I've done a, a few of these tutorials now in a row. Nothing else to do while well, my internet is down. Arg. <laughs> anyway, it, it does mean that I can't very easily go out and show you examples and use some of the tools that I would have liked to, but eh, whatever. In this one, we're going to make a book out of these heads. So one of those tools I could have showed you is the Zim Asset tool, which allows you to point to this directory and automatically, well, you select all the things in here and then will automatically uh, prepare you to bring in these assets. So these assets are in the tutorials directory under heads, so a heads folder. And we're gonna make a book out of these that you can go from page to page. Uh, the assets are 1024 by 1024, so it might help. I mean, there's a nice easy way, basically, you can just say, hey, make a book from these assets. And as long as those assets are the right size, that's all you need to do. These assets aren't necessarily the right size, though, to fit on a 1024 by 768, because each one is, is 1024 by 1024. <laughs> So um, we can cheat. We could set the, the stage size to twice twice the size, well, I mean, to what it would be. So that would be 1024 times two width and then 1024 height. And then uh, animate will scale it down to the right size anyway. So that's one way, or you can rescale these images. I am not going to bother. So we'll do it the first way, uh, as mentioned. The other thing is you don't actually have to make the book from the whole picture here. There, uh, Most of the time when we make a book, uh, if I had internet, I'd go and show you a whole bunch of books that we've made. But um, when we post the video, <laughs> one, one day, when we post the video, we'll put in some links to some sample books and you can have an idea. But uh, not all the time are the pictures, the whole page of the book. Quite often we have descriptions like labels and stuff that we're adding or any other interactive things. As a matter of fact, the very front of the Zim, or current front of the Zim YouTube channel is a Zim book, which talks about a whole bunch of Zim features, and all those are interactive pages. Pretty amazing. So we've made a book out of interactive pages. But here, we'll make kind of the traditional, hey, here's books out of these pictures, and let's see how it goes, shall we? Uh, so those are head, head 01, head 02, and we're in, inside Zim. So the idea is we need to load assets. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're just using Zim and not through uh, Adobe Animate, then we have a Zim frame and we would usually pass the assets into the frame. If you're here, when we when we haven't sort of, in a sense, exposed the Zim frame, it's being done automatically for you with Zim Shim, uh, we would then use the load assets of the frame. Oh, right. So uh, we say F. So first of all, we've um, made a copy of our last tutorial called it Zim 11 book, and we're in here in a actions window. Okay, so we are given an F for frame. F is frame. We also have S for the stage. These are capital letters. We have width for the stage width, and H, or sorry, H for the stage, W for the stage width, and H for the stage height. Let's comment these out though. That's given. <coughs> Excuse me, have a cough as well. No internet and a cough. Uh, okay, so in other words, we're asking the frame to load some assets. And then in here, if we have a bunch of assets, if we have one asset, we can just say, hey, give me, um, for instance, head, z oh, in quotes, head 01.png. And we would say the path that's into, and that would be uh, heads like that with a slash on the end. Or you could have taken this and put it at the beginning, but then anytime you access it down below, you would have had to do it. So we did a tutorial on assets. Anyway, there's our frame.load assets. Then we could ask for the frame dot on uh, complete, complete. I have a bit of a hard time wrangling these quotes at the moment. So frame, when it's complete, we call this arrow function right here. I'm not quite used to typing in animate, so I'm getting brackets here and not brackets there, and then I want that to go over there. Um, okay, so frame.onComplete call this, and then inside here we know we can access the head with a new pick, and head01.png. 
I'm going to take that dot center it, for instance, on the stage. And uh, here, I think, I can't remember on complete now. I think we have to do a stage update. So stage update here. OK. All right, there we go. Um, that would, it's one way to load an asset. I think you've seen from before that we can lazy load it. So we can just actually just take this, put it in here. We would need a path. We would need a path. At that point, path equals heads in quotes. Can I do this? Uh, um, yeah. By the way, <laughs> anybody from Adobe's watching this, we could uh, use a little massaging on the editor. I'm coming from Adam, and uh, there's a lot of features that modern editors have, as you know, for making brackets, probably, that we could move into here to, to type a little bit easier. Uh, what was it? Heads uh, slash. Okay. I mean, lots of great features from here as well, but... Uh, Okay, so if we did that, let's just check to see if we have a head. There we uh, there we have a head on the stage. Um, it's the stage width because our head is 1024. But it's 1024 by 1024. That means it's not quite fitting on there. There is a way that we can fit um, dot scale to, I mean, aside from manually scaling it, but scale to the stage. And if we say 100, that would mean 100 in the width, 100 in the height. So uh, whatever's minimum. Okay, so if we don't put anything, it will scale it outside. And we'll actually end up just looking like it does now. But if we put 100 comma 100, that means fit it within 100 of the stage and uh, width and height. So if we go control enter, now we see it is actually fitting to the 100% of the height is, is what's what's fitting that in a sense. Um, the other route to go on that would, you know, to be sort of make it 90 and 90, and then it would fit um, not to 90 percent. So that's that's how we can scale it to the stage. What we could have done is we could have scaled these heads so that when there's two pages, basically there's a left hand page and a right hand page. So that when there's two pages, they're the right scale that we want, maybe even with some border around here. Uh, what I'm proposing to do is we just make the stage twice as wide as 1024 by 768 and make the, the height 1024. Uh, sorry, not twice as wide as 1024 by 768. Twice as wide as 1024. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the plan. So over here in the stage width, what is that? 248. So 248. And this one then becomes 1024. And we uh, try it again. So now what you're seeing is the stage is this bit right here going way wide. And we can get two of the unscaled sizes right on it. And indeed, so let's uh, check that out. We won't bother scaling two. Do you want me to comment that out so you have it if you ever see these files in the future? Uh, we won't bother centering it. We'll just say add two. Okay, I'm sorry. Add two, and we go Control Enter, and now what we've got is the left-hand side of the book, and and that actually I think we got we got seven heads, and we want to start the book with the cover on the right and nothing here. So often what we'll do is we'll have the front cover sitting open or like sitting closed, I guess, front cover on the right, and then we start opening up the book, and then on the left we introduce the book or say you know who made it or information about it or whatever you want as a little signature or something like that or nothing. So anyway, book on the right. A uh, little bit of info on the left, and then we just start moving uh, the book over, uh, flipping the pages. So anyway, that would have been fine for one head, but we've got a bunch of heads, so we should really preload these. We should really say, hey, when uh, uh, it's a whole group of these things, we might have many, even more. Uh, we preload them, and we start when we're ready. You don't have to do that. You could actually... Uh, make the first few pages of the book and then load in the background with this load assets thing. So that can be handy. 
if you do that, you might even uh, potentially, if you were doing 100 pages or something, the problem is, is people probably aren't going to see all the 100 pages. So why are you loading all those images and waiting for them to load all of them? See what I mean? So instead, you load the first few, and then as you get a little bit further, you load some more, and as you get a little bit further, you load some more. If you do that, it's quite important that you learn this technique right here, which is uh, const um, first, we'll call it, is equal to. So we're assigning the load assets to a variable, and then we don't say the frame.on, but we say first.on. Because if you had a bunch of different loadings at different times, and they were all on the frame, every single loading would call the frame complete. And so you would start getting things mixed up. Now with this technique of first, and when first is complete, we've got these pictures. Second, when second is complete, we've got these pictures, etc. That is probably the easiest way to handle it. There's other ways to handle it too, but um, the easiest way would be to make sure that when we load a batch of assets, if we're going to be loading another batch of assets later and another batch after that, keep unique names for the, the loading. Otherwise, you might end up recalling the complete function, which can be confusing. Um, okay, so there we go. We're going to load our first batch. And then inside here, we have a pick. And let's just do the add to, although you know, this isn't what we're going to be doing in the end, but uh, that's fine. Get rid of that. Oh, we wanted to keep that around, didn't we? For the sake of the scale too, just in case you wanted to remember that. So we'll comment that out. We'll go control enter. And we basically have the same thing where the pick is loaded on the left. But now the idea is we don't just want one, we want a bunch of them. So how do we handle a bunch of them? In an array. So we put that in an array. I've now learned that I can't select this and hit the array sign. Let me just check. No. Okay, so we'll undo that and put the array around it. Okay, so there's the array around it. That's head one. We would then go to head two, etc. So that can be kind of annoying to make, especially, um, well, if you've got a lot of files. So that's why we have the Zim fi file asset uh, is a tool that you can get under the code section of Zim and under tools. And you just uh, hit this browse, you find your directory, your local directory, you select the files you want to load, and then you hit save or something like that. And what happens is Zim will make all that stuff for you. So it'll make all the list of the files that you've got here. All right. Uh, the other thing, though, is we've named this, and I don't mind looking at this, uh, we've named him head 010203. If I were thinking ahead a little bit, <laughs> if I were thinking ahead a little bit, I would have named them head zero zero, head zero one, head zero two, and start at zero because we have this thing called a Zim loop, which makes looping really easy. And it starts at zero. You can, in a future parameter, in some far off parameter, well, not too far, but uh, maybe the fourth parameter or something like that, you can say when to, where to start, like start at one or start at five. Uh, you can say some other things about looping too, but 99% of the time we loop, maybe 95% of the time we loop, we're just looping starting at zero, and so why not make it easy? So here is making looping easy. Are you ready? Uh, loop, well, we've got seven things. Loop seven times. Each time we loop, we get the loop number in an arrow function like that. Uh, almost like that. There we go. Oh, come on. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're looping seven times. And did I say I? I missed the I. Or maybe I put it in there. I think I hit a minus sign instead of the I. Anyway, there we go. We loop seven times. Each time we collect an I in our arrow function. And inside here, we now have an I, zog I. <laughs> Problem is, Adobe has a loop, a, a global loop function or a global loop property or something, and we decided not to automatically erase that. Uh, but it's easy to fix. So if you don't need it, probably you won't. Uh, you can always say zim loop right here, zim dot loop. And that will refer to the zim loop. But you can also just say uh, loop is equal to zim dot loop up at the top. And what that will do is it will take, uh, yeah, it will overwrite the Adobe's loop, whatever that's for, I don't even know what it's for. And then 
um, replace it with the Zim loop like so. So that'll work. That's why I didn't mind showing you the Zim loop right here. I mean, we could have just copied and pasted this, but uh, it's nice to show you the Zim loop. And there is that little snag with, um, as far as I know, that's one of the only snags that we've come across in bringing in the Zim shim is that, yeah, loop, loop already exists and we didn't want to completely wipe it out. Maybe one day we'll change our mind about that. I suppose we should probably figure out, perhaps you could leave a comment somewhere if you happen to know what the Adobe loop is being used for. And if, uh, if maybe in our, our Zim shim, we should just automatically do that. Okay. I can't remember back in the, in the Zim shim, we have to load certain things in certain times. It may be that Adobe is assigning the loop after we have access to the loading process. So we're, we're stuck anyway, we'd, we'd have to do it here. <laughs> yeah, actually sounds a bit familiar. <laughs> the altruistic, altruistic, we could kind of say, oh no, no, we didn't want to overwrite the, the Adobe's loop. <laughs> in actual fact, we were, we were gonna do it, but we couldn't. Uh, anyway, I'm not sure which one it is now. Let's take a look in the console. So we'll go control enter. Zog, by the way, is the Zim logging to the console. And if we F11 here, boop. No, F12's here, sorry. F12, there is zero to six. Um, by the way, we've taken care of this error in a latest create JS, but uh, it, uh, it's still there. Let me hide it. Let me hide it. How do I do that? Top, no, default levels, no, uh, issues, somewhere in here. Console issues, console issues. Where was it? There's a little... Hi, live, no, settings maybe. Uh, show console, show errors, that's good. Hi, network, eager. Where the heck is it? There's somewhere in here that allows me to, there it is, info. Oh, no, I want info. Where was that? <laughs> just, did it just go away? Oh, oh was it that one? No. <laughs> Crap, where the heck did that go? Here. I thought I had a little... Uh, that's... Oh, for Pete's sake. Um, I do want info, maybe. Or or don't. Is that info? Is that considered info? Warnings. I thought that was warnings. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. So I've now hidden my warnings, and uh, I don't have to see it. But like I said, we have, we're have we just in the middle of launching a CreateJS version. By the way, I maintain um, CreateJS currently on the, the GitHub. Uh, that was built by Grant Skinner and their team. They, they're on to all sorts of other things. Um, but anyway, I do my best to maintain uh, CreateJS on the GitHub there as well. So I am Dr. Abstract, as you may know but perhaps we'll get rid of that error also on the GitHub. I'm not sure how quickly that would move over to Adobe. <laughs> They're still on version one, um, but uh, whatever. All right, so where were we at then? We see, hey, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, but uh, there's a bit of a snag in that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so ooh, a coding puzzle, can you do it? I'm not sure necessarily who I'm talking to. It may be that you haven't coded all that much and that might be tricky for you, but certainly if you've coded, it's not really all that tricky to uh, adjust that. Once again, we could have named the heads starting with uh, zero, zero, and then it wouldn't, wouldn't have been a problem. So what I'm gonna be doing is making this array rather than hand coding each one to seven, I'm going to do it in this loop. So we'll start here with an array, so const, heads, um, probably okay, is equal to, and we'll start off with an empty array. And then down in here, we will be adding to the array. So we'll say heads, the way we add is with push. So we push something onto the array. And what we're going to be pushing is a string that's made out of our I. So it starts with head zero. Luckily we don't go over, over 10. So I think we're, okay operating in the way that we're going to just say head zero. So we start with that and we concatenate with the plus sign. But what we're going to, if we concatenated I, you would see that we would be starting at head zero, zero. So it's just concatenate I plus one. 
But as soon as we're concatenating here and we're trying to add, then we just put the adding in brackets, uh, which I think I have to do like this. Okay, so the brackets will run first. It will add one to i. Therefore, since i is starting at zero, it's going to be one in here. Yay. And we can have a look at this. Zog. We can zog in colors too. How about we zog with a nice blue color? So whatever color you can kind of think of, there's pink, well, could have been purple. Uh, there's blue, there's red. So if you know, want to zog in anger or alert zog, that's red. Orange, oops, orange, green, yellow, zoggy. <laughs> uh, nice, huh? So we'll zog in blue. And what we're going to zog is what heads is like that. Okay, and that will tell us what's in the array. We go control enter and it comes on over here. One one issue is, I, I don't know, you guys are welcome to tell me in the comments too if there's any way to avoid opening up in a new browser every time. And not only that, but your console, what usually happens is your console's open, but I have to now open my console and I forgot again in F11. Here it is. This is telling me an array with heads, he Head zero one. Oh, it's not quite complete though, is it? Head zero two, et cetera, to seven. So that worked, didn't it? You see that? Yay. Uh, but we have to concatenate on the rest of it, which was the quote dot PNG. So obviously it's up to you doing this amount of work just to do seven heads in here with, I would probably have cut and, cut and paste that a few times. Would have been just as easy. But if you had a hundred of them, or indeed, if you're learning how to use arrays for efficiency, there there's some array work. And we did see the Zim loop. So the Zim loop is very similar to for let i equals zero, although we could have said one in that case, just keep on looping as long as i is less than the total seven. Uh, see, I almost made a mistake there with the comma, but it's a semicolon in there and i plus plus. And then in here, you would have i. So that's a lot harder to type than this. Not only that, the Zim loop does a whole bunch of things. It loops through arrays and just gives you an index each time. The Zim for, or the, JavaScript for each will do that or whatever it is for in I can't remember which one is it loops through objects and same with for for in, in or for each will will do that too but it also loops through um, strings it loops through containers so the looping through container is the most handy part where we often will have a container of objects that we want to loop through and we just say the name of the container dot loop and then it's given each of the elements right here so each of the element was would be given here followed by if you want some more parameters the index and the total and whatever so uh when you loop through an array you also get an index and a total if you need it but usually it's just the item that you're you're getting there and this is looping through a number so zim loop is very versatile uh and we've just uh, you know i never use a for loop or any of the javascript loops anymore i only use a zim loop and it's way easier basically all right, um, good. So now we have the right array, hopefully. Shall we see that? Control Enter. And F12. There's our array. Oh, note that it's blue as well. So you see how that's blue right there? And that can be handy if you've got a bunch of other things that you're doing too. Uh, to color code the console.log is quite excellent. And there they are. Head 01. Head zero two, head in with the dot PNG on the end of them. Yeah, the only reason I could do that easily is because I've done that lots of times. <laughs> All right, so one day, uh, if, if you're still scratching your head about this, one day you'll be able to do it too. Okay, so we don't need to, well, I'll leave that there just to show you, or remind you about the Zog of color. Maybe even put a little message here. Uh, Console.log in blue. So it's like, darn, I mean, we, we got a nice easy one in Flash. What was it, Trace, I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, uh, then PHP has Echo, which is really cute. Java, unfortunately, has sys.output.print or outline. Out, I don't know, concept. I can't remember what it is. Some three-word three, three word, uh, printing. Oh, poor, poor people. Uh, JavaScript's console.log isn't terribly pleasant either, but Zog 
for a shortcut to logging is very nice. It's always odd. It's fun. Feel like a caveman. All right. Now we don't need this array right here. Instead, we just say heads. So we're bringing in the array of heads that we made to right here. And all of those will be found in the heads folder. And now I can ask for any of the heads that I want. Shall we test one? Heads 3.png. And when I go control enter, it's a different head. Ooh. So let's make our book then. We'll comment that out. And we would say new book. <laughs> Finally, you've been waiting for this, huh? So a new book, we give it dimensions. So we would say the width comma height in this case. So we're using the, the stage's whole width and height um, from here. So that will be our 2048 by 1024. Sometimes, say you were bringing in a bunch of pictures, say all the same size, but an unknown size, maybe smaller, because we don't always have the book be the whole screen size. Sometimes a book stays sort of in a place on, on the screen. Um, and we might not know the size of these, at which point there's a little trick you can do when it's complete. You can kind of say const pick is equal to and just pick one, um, probably the first one Doesn't really matter like that. Uh, OK, so that's the first one there. And then you ask uh, right here if we wanted it two pictures times the width, then we would say pick dot width times two. And this would be pick dot height, and this would actually work too, uh, as we've got it. All right, so there we are making a book that's twice whatever our whatever the picture width is, because you may not know that we happen to have pictures that are twice the size of the, the console, so I'm not going to bother keeping that in there. Uh, this would just be the width of the whole stage and the height. And then we can just pass in the, the actual strings of the pictures. We made it that easy. Normally, this would be an array of assets that you would be putting in. So if you were making your own assets, like, hey, this page, this page, that container, uh, Zim's got a page, um, a page uh, class. So you can make pages that way, or it could be a container of something, or who knows, whatever. Um, it could be another bitmap of some sort of picture shape that you've drawn dynamically in, whole interactive work, whatever. Uh, but you would make an array of those and pass that array of uh, display objects that you want to make a book from. If they're the images, we decided, uh, you know, rather than having to make a new pick out of each one of those in the array, that could be done too. We used to do it that way. So we'd bring we'd have our array of strings, but then we'd have to convert those to an array of picks, like a new pick uh, with that string, and a new pick with the next string, and a new pick with the next string. And that's pretty easy to do, but it's a little bit of a pain in the neck. So we did it automatically. If you're passing in a string, we assume that you that, that we've got a, a loaded picture um, that matches that string. So in other words, it's just our array here, which is heads. We'll dot center that on the stage, and let's have a look at control enter. So check it out. There is the, the first head on the right. And look, it's got a little corner. And I pick up the corner. Oh, my goodness. We've done it. Oh, gorgeous. And that's the last one. Or we could use arrows. There's also interactivity to be able to jump to certain pages, to fan through them, et cetera. Like, for instance, at the end, we could make a button here at the end saying home. And when we press it, it would then go to the home. Uh, the other books the other books have that kind of stuff in it. So I'm not going to look at that right now. I might need the docs and I don't have internet. <laughs> uh, that's me, by the way, Dr. Abstract. So I am Dr. Abstract. Do you, did you want to did you want to look at that code one more time there? New book, width, height, pass in the assets, and center it. Do you think that might be useful for you? I mean, I hope so. We've made interactive NFTs of various art pieces um, that people have bought because they're they're in a book. 
So I would, would have liked to show you that. I don't have internet though. But isn't that amazing? So I probably made, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 Zim books of, of different things. And you may remember this. This is the first time I ever did this was in Flash, that stuff. And I had code that would do that, a special custom code that would do that. It wasn't my code at the time. So when Zim came along, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, that's right. A few people have been asking for this book. I remember that book. Let's see if I can make it. And that's our version of it. There, you know, it's a, it's a kind of semi-geometric version, I guess you could call it, uh, the, way, the way it kind of works with that. It doesn't doesn't put a, a, a drop shadow curl in there, but it seems real enough to me. And it hits that corner. You see it hits the corner up there and then it waits for a bit and plops it on over. Um, you know, works well enough as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, love it. I'm Dr. Abstract. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, uh, this tutorial. Um, Zim tutorials for Adobe Animate. Come visit us at zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash slack. We'd love to answer any questions there, help you out. Also tell your friends about Zim. If you're working in Animate in a, in a company and you're, you know, you got a lot of coworkers and stuff like that, uh, there are, there's so much extra that you can add. And that's why this is tutorials are called um, Build More with Adobe Animate. This is to help you make more things more quickly in Adobe Animate. Uh, okay, cheers, take it easy.